Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for uh, Sages for having me present our, our group study. I'm Warren Sun, I'm one of the residents from the University of Alberta in Edmonton, Canada. And we'll be presenting on the surgical management, uh, comparing it with medical management on uh, patients with Barrett's esophagus on histopathology and progression. Uh, we have no uh, disclosures to declare. So Barrett's esophagus is the uh, metaplasia of the distal esophagus um, from the uh, columnar uh, epithelial, or to the columnar epithelial cells, and this affects approximately 5% of adults in the United States. It's uh, due to the, the theory is due to the chronic reflux uh, esophagitis, and it is pre precursor to esophageal cancer through the metaplasia dysplasia carcinoma sequence. Um, due to the uh, uh, high morbidity and mortality of esophageal cancer, early identification of Barrett's esophagus and dysplasia is needed for prevention of uh, morbidity of esophagectomies. So the American Gastroenterological Association 2011 positional statement uh, suggested a three to five year surveillance endoscopies for bear, uh, patients with Barrett's esophagus and increased frequency for patients with uh, presence of dysplasia. They also uh, did not support uh, PPI therapy um, solely for the uh, prevention of uh, esophageal cancer, as well as uh, did not support anti-reflux surgery over the use of PPIs for the, the prevention of the risk. However, since that positional statement, a study from the Annals of Surgery in 2016 demonstrated that there may be a decreased risk with anti-reflux surgery in the progression for esophageal cancer. However, their stati uh, statistical analysis was only significant in the subgroup of four studies which were published since the 2000s. So as surgeons, uh, we wanted to um, study the role of fund application uh, in the effect of prevention of esophageal cancer. And uh, we thought uh, to systematically ev uh, evaluate the uh, evidence for uh, Barrett's esophagus histopathology on regression and progression. And we pr hypothesized that uh, fund application would uh, lead to more regression of Barrett's esophagus with or without low-grade dysplasia and prevention of progression to high-grade dysplasia or esophageal cancer in uh, these patients compared to medical therapy. We performed a systematic uh, review and meta-analysis updated in February of 2021. Um, and uh, we used the random effects model for our primary outcome of histopathological regression and progression um, using the uh, pooled odds ratio. This was our inclusion and uh, exclusion criteria with a focus that all patients uh, had to have diagnosis of Barrett's esophagus uh, pre before any treatment, and they had to compare uh, surgical uh, versus medical treatment. Uh, our initial search uh, revealed 3,218 uh, abstracts after duplicates were remo removed. This was reviewed by one author. Um, that yielded 157 full text studies uh, reviewed by two authors. Um, and nine uh, primary studies were included in our systematic review, six of which had enough data for a meta-analysis. These were the primary studies included. Uh, there were seven prospective uh, cohort studies, one retrospective, one uh, randomized control trial for 1360 patients. Um, these studies uh, range from uh, 1998 to 20, uh, uh, 1990 to 2018 and follow up periods of one and a half years to seven years. Comparing the baseline demographics of the medical group versus the surgical group, we saw a tendency for the surgical group to have younger patients. Um, and uh, the uh, majority of the medical treatment, 90% uh, of which were proton pump inhibitor therapy. Um, and over half of the patients in the surgical arm uh, received Nissen fund applications. Um, although this may be underreported as a, a significant portion, 39% uh, did not report uh, what specific type of anti-reflux surgery they'd had. Furthermore, um, the medical group tended to have more non-dysplastic Barrett's esophagus, whereas the surgical group had um, a higher rate of low-grade dysplasia. Our meta-analysis showed that uh, in the, um, the surgical group was favored to have uh, uh, four times increased odds of having uh, regression of Barrett's esophagus to uh, no Barrett's or uh, presence of low-grade dysplasia regressed to uh, just uh, non-dysplastic Barrett's esophagus or, uh, or no Barrett's at all. Similarly, 
uh, uh, meta-analysis for our uh, progression demonstrated that uh, the surgery arm had uh, three times uh, decreased odds of uh, progression to high-grade dysplasia or esophageal cancer. So our study demonstrated that uh, fund application versus medical uh, therapy led to increased odds of uh, histopathological regression and uh, prevention of progression to high-grade dysplasia or esophageal cancer. A proposed mechanism could be that the surgery has um, increased uh, a reinforced barrier for both acid and non-acid reflux. However, regardless of whatever therapy that patients are receiving, it is imperative to uh, perform ongoing surveillance um, to look for any progression, future, further progression um, to, uh, to display, high-grade dysplasia or cancer. Our limitations of our study uh, was limited by uh, heterogeneity between the studies and inherent uh, confounders that were uh, reported in the um, uh, primary studies. Um, further research will be required to, uh, you know, ide identify the uh, optimal delivery, timing, and surveillance of patients, whether they have uh, fund application or medical therapy for patients with Barrett's esophagus. And thank you for listening. I'm happy to take any questions.